Hey, Michael, how's it going? Very good, Faith. Thank you for having me. Awesome. Awesome. Well, yes, we're definitely excited to have you. Want to learn a lot about uh, Grind Before Glory Art Boot Camp and how you got started with that. Uh, tell us about yourself first, though, Michael Buffington. Um, are you the CEO, the sole owner? Are you in a partnership? Tell us about um, how the structure of the business is set up and how you got started. Okay, so uh, my name is Michael Buffington Jr. I am born and raised in San Francisco, California, and I am a professional concept artist in the video game and film industry. And I've also, I've been doing that for almost two decades. And also for almost two decades, I've been teaching at the university level. And I just recently decided to branch out and start my own art fundamental skill building program called Grind Before Glory. I am the CEO and founder of the program. That's awesome, congratulations. When did you actually get started? Was that, a, have you been, in a business for about a year? Is this literally brand new, like as of the last couple of months? What was your your official launch date? So, so this was birthed in my head several years ago. I wasn't sure how to execute, but what I decided to do was really put a lot of energy towards making this vision come to life. And so this is something that has been in the making for about two years. And finally, after a couple of years of hard work, that means curriculum building, that means website design, that means marketing, all the different things that take place when you're leading up to launching something. Yeah. Um, this, this ambitious um, mm -hmm. are things that I've been working on and now we're finally gonna be able to launch this summer. Oh, so the summer of 2022 yeah. is the launch date. Yeah. That's awesome. So this is coming soon. That's even better. So we can build up, we can tease it, get some buzz around it. Absolutely. <laughs> Love that. Love that. So who is your target? Um, are you looking at folks that are into graphic design? Is it fine art? Is it everything in between? Well, primarily what we're looking for is for people who want to do pursue some career path where drawing and painting is really a foundational sort of focus of that particular career path. So illustration, comic books, um, concept art for video games, visual development right. for animation, anything where drawing and painting is a real serious part of your skill set is kind of the people that we're targeting. Um, we're looking, you know, we're looking for people who are serious. And who are focused and that's one of the reasons why i named the program grind before glory right because i wanted people to see the name and understand what we were all about just in the name itself and i had a lot of pushback from my team on the name but i vetoed everybody i said absolutely not we yeah. are not changing the name this is what it is because people have to understand why they need this program because you have to have the grind before the glory everybody wants to roll out of bed and work at disney or pixar or blizzard or riot games or wherever but you have to put in the time my father used to say michael you have to learn before you earn and wow. so that's kind of where that comes from i love that no you're gonna take me off on a tangent here um because I preach that all the time. I, I preach that to my team. I preach that to my family. I preach <laughs> that to my friends. Um, you know, it can feel a little frustrating or even sometimes disrespectful when people see you at a certain point in your life and in your career. And they just assume, like you said, that, oh, you're just here. So, you know, throw me an opportunity or I just want to do exactly what you're doing. They don't understand all of the in-between um, you know, the learning, the growing, the trials, the tribulations, <laughs> overcoming those obstacles, right? So um, I love the name. And I think that it translates, right, even across the board for other things that you may produce sure. down the line. Um, because again, it's it's very critical. I consider myself a creative. Um, I always reference my, you know, my, my college uh, career going to school for PR was extremely intense. 
Um, yeah. And it just showed you even getting out of school that, you know, nothing really mattered except for your experience. And did you actually know how to not only come up with an idea or a concept, but execute it and bring it into fruition? So um, yeah. I think that's going to be super critical for, you know, again, everything that you're going to do. So I'm, I'm curious, are you... Um, are you seeing a lot of Black people interested so far, um, the Black community interested in this program? Are you getting some great feedback from us? You know, um, really, to be totally honest with you, one of the reasons why I started Grind Before Glory, the, the biggest inspiration was because, you know, as a, a Black artist in a white male dominated industry, yeah, I realized that one of the things, one of the other things my father told me when I was very young was that I would have to work twice as hard just to get the same opportunities. Mm. And I didn't really understand that when I was younger, but I began to understand that as I got older and I would miss out on opportunities and I couldn't really understand why when I would see lesser skilled, lesser talented artists getting these opportunities and being allowed to grow and thrive. And it wasn't until a, a black man by the name of Conrad Montgomery, who's now the vice president at Nickelodeon, helped me come down to LA and get hooked up with an agent. And within four months, I had my first Hollywood feature film. Wow. And, and those were the opportunities that we needed. But what I realized in that experience was that in order for us to grow our power base in whatever industry we're in, we have to really function as a community. We have mm -hmm. to make it a, a, a responsibility. We have to look at it as a social obligation to go back and find the next hungry, um, young, up and coming person in your particular field. In my case, it's art, you know? And, and I've done that as, as a matter of fact, one of my main instructors is a young man by the name of Jordan Foster. And I met Jordan through his godfather when he was 12 years old. And, you know, he, he didn't show any, any, you know, particular aptitude or talent that made me think he was any sort of prodigy, but he really enjoyed drawing. Mm. And he was a young black man. And that was all I needed. Right. And so I started to mentor him. And I've, I'm still his mentor. He's 27 years old right now. He's graduated with a master's degree at the university level from the program that I created, which was the number one program in the country and number three in the world. Wow. Um, and um, number one and number number one in the country. Yes. Still still rank number one in the country. <laughs> let's just stop. Let's not just skip over that. And number three in the world. That is incredible. Congratulations. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. When I came on, you know, I was I was working in the industry for about a decade. And then I got offered the opportunity to come on and build this program from scratch because really concept art is a relatively new field, I would say, yes. within the last 20, 25 years. Yep. And so I came on about 10 years ago to build this program from scratch. Mm -hmm. And I built the BFA and the MFA program. And within seven years, I had it ranked number one in the country, which has held that position ever since. Wow. And it was number three in the world. And then I, I think it dropped to number five in the world at some point. But uh, but we did so all right. The value of this, people <laughs> studying under you, I mean, it's it's just essentially invaluable, the, the wealth of information and experience that they're going to get through this program. Talk to us about the way that the program is set up and what can people expect coming into the program? What are the all the phases and the steps? Well, let me just circle back real quick to, um, to uh, Jordan, because I, I, I want oh, yes, to understand please. that. Um, when he came to me and I started working with him, you know, he he was beginning just like everybody else, but he worked really hard. He did what I said, and I trained him for essentially 15 years, and he has now gone on to work at DreamWorks Films, and he just finished a gig at Netflix, and I am the lead concept artist at a video game company in San Francisco, and I just hired him on to be one of my concept artists. Love and so, so this young man has gone on to do some really amazing things um, because I took him under my wing because, and I told him, I said, Jordan, I said, I need you to understand something. I said, you have a social obligation to do just what I did for you. Mm. You cannot just go on and enjoy the fruits of your success. Mm -hmm. You have to understand that it's important for us to build our power base in the industry to go back and find the next young, hot hungry black artists 
who you can then mentor and guide and train. Yes. And when you do that, before you know it, the industry will be peppered with talented black folks. And that's, that's right. what we need. And that's so, right. you know, that's, that's what, you know, I, I've been able to do that for him and, and some others, but I really wanted to, I really wanted to create a situation where I could directly um, connect with a lot of young black artists because only so many of them come through my program. Mm -hmm. And I would, I would, as soon as I see them, I would take them under my wing. I would give them the talk and tell them what they had to do to make it in the industry. But I couldn't go to the administration and say, hey, you know, can you please send me all the black kids? Right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like that wouldn't be good for them. You could, but. <laughs> right. So what, so what right. I needed to do was I needed to create a situation where I could directly connect with my community and be right. able to help them. Because I'm going to be honest with you, and I'm not accusing anybody of, of anything negative, but nobody is going to care about my people in the way that I care about my people. That's right. Nobody is going to have the burden for mm -hmm. a young aspiring black artist mm -hmm. that I have, mm -hmm. you see, and nobody's going to understand their plight, what they're dealing with as, as a black artist in a white dominated field. Nobody's going to understand what they're going through like me. So I know how to mentor mm -hmm. these people going through this, these, this, these programs in this situation because I did it. That's and because right. I'm on the other end of that. So that's and what's interesting about that is the sympathy and the empathy or the connectivity that we have for our people. We still have to pass that down yes. to the to your to your point, what you were saying to the next generation. Because sometimes, you know, I, I think we talk about this all the time within the We Buy Black team about how, you know, in these different pockets and industries, whether it's you know, sports or uh, tech or healthcare, education, entrepreneurship, like you get yours. And you can just take off and go. Right. But if you form a collective and you form, right. you know, ways, you know, even if it's not anything formal, but it's just a part of your business practice to make sure that you're giving back and, and making sure that others like yourself have opportunities and more importantly, have the information and the education needed to actually um thrive in their spaces that's where you see the real impact and change right so that's yeah. where we're like okay what can we do in all these spaces how can we create this you know broad community that can stretch across nations and countries and all these things to make sure that whoever it is whether they're in african countries whether they're right here in atlanta whether they're in the la um they know they can tap in and get access to resources and opportunities, but it has to be on your mind as an individual first to have the, the desire and the responsibility, like you're saying, to actually reach back and pull somebody up with you. Absolutely. And, you know, I see, you know, I grew up in the Bay Area, right? Bay Area is, a, is very much a melting pot. Yeah. And so I'm around a lot of other cultures, okay? And in fact, my mother is from Central America. You know, my father's, mm -hmm. my father's African-American, my mother's from Central America. And so I grew up around a lot of different cultures, Asian, mm -hmm. Indian, Filipino, you name it, right? Right. And I, I see certain things in other cultures that I wish there was more of in Black in ours, culture, you absolutely. see? Absolutely. Because, because they, they have a burden for their people. They just, it's already sort of uh, an unwritten rule that when they get somewhere, they're taking yeah, everybody. No else. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and so exactly. I wish there was more of that in our culture. And, and, you know, it, you know, you can't just sit there and wish and hope and dream, you know, you can't, you, you don't hope hustle, right. You got to get out mm -hmm. there and do it. And so mm -hmm. that's the way that I looked at it. I said, I'm going to start something so that I could more directly affect my community so that I could help young artists, because here's the thing, you know, if I can help, them develop that foundational skill set whatever they do subsequent to that is almost irrelevant because once you have the foundation you yes. can continue to build and even if the program that you're in maybe isn't as good as some other programs as long as you got the foundation from somebody like me mm -hmm. you know who was a master curriculum designer who was an absolute you know a, a obsessive compulsive draftsman and a world-class draftsman painter myself yes. you know you'll be okay you know, Absolutely. and so that's that's kind of how I looked at it. And that was the inspiration behind starting Grime Before Glory. This is amazing. We got to make sure everyone knows about this. And again, I hope that you branch off into different spaces with the same energy 
because it's so necessary right now. Yeah. We definitely need it. We need that fire. We need that. Um, we need the passion for what you do to be so meticulous and excellent at it. You know, yeah. again, I talk to a lot of folks. I mentor a lot of, you know, up and coming entrepreneurs. And I try to make sure that people understand that it's not for everyone, but if you're going to do it, you have to be the best. Right. You have to be the best. So I do want to get back to learning more about the actual program and what people can mm -hmm. expect, um, you know, going through all the different steps and then what they can expect at the end in terms of, you know, post course, is there additional mentorship that's threaded throughout? Tell us about that. So when, when somebody, before somebody comes in, the first place it starts is it starts with an interview. And what we do is we sit down with every single prospective student mm -hmm. and we have a talk with them. We want to make sure that everyone is on the same page mm -hmm. and that we have all the same expectations that you're not, coming, yeah, you're not coming in just to hang out and chill. Yeah. And you're going to come here with the right work ethic and the right mindset, mm -hmm. because if you're not if you're not in the right mindset and you're not ready to do the grind and you're not ready to handle the intensity of the program, then I don't want to take your money. Mm. You see what I'm saying? Because you would be wasting your money mm. and that's not the kind of business I want to run. I Love want that. people here who are going to walk in and who are going to get the biggest bang for their buck, get the most out of the experience. But mm -hmm. that happens if they are ready willing and able to do what it takes to get through the program so it starts with that interview to make sure that we're on the same page because we do have limited space and i mm -hmm. want to make sure that whoever is in the program is you don't have to be any skill set right we're not looking at people's skill we're not judging people based on whether or not they have a certain level of draftsmanship or painting coming in we're not elitists like that Mm -hmm. But we are looking for people who have the right mindset and the right mm -hmm. attitude. You have to be teachable mm -hmm. and, and you have to be willing to work hard. And if you have um, the right mindset, the right attitude and the right work ethic, then we're all for it. And it doesn't matter what skill level you're at, because the program is designed to take. If somebody wakes up and all of a sudden says, I want to work for Pixar as a visual development artist and you are day one drawing that's what grind before glory is if wow, somebody so this could be a beginner no no experience required at all ever absolutely absolutely okay. I, wow. I i am an i am an expert i am a world-class expert on building skill from zero to professional level mm. i i once had a had a young uh, a young lady who came through my program she was from indonesia and she was one of the worst draftsmen that i had ever seen okay and I was so tempted to, to, to suggest maybe that she do something else, that she try 3D modeling or something like that. But I have this personal policy that if somebody, you know, says they want to do concept art or do what I do, I'm going to give them every chance to make that dream happen. And so, you know, she was, she had the best attitude. She would show up to all my workshops. She took classes with me. Whatever I told her to do, she would do twice as much. And for a long time, you know, she still struggled. Mm -hmm. But eventually I saw this turning point. And then she got better and better. And by the time she walked out of school, she had a job at Nickelodeon. This is incredible. So, you know, and when I see a lot of my former students, like I'm calling people up right now, trying to find artists for this project, very big project that I'm working on. And guess what? They're all working. They're booked and busy. <laughs> busy. You know, and I'm like, well, do you think if, if we get if I get the budget and, and I can hire, you know, you at a slightly better salary and slightly better. And they're like, well, you got to sweeten the deal, man. I mean, they're so they're I've made them wow. so successful that they don't even have time for me anymore. <laughs> I love it. The students becoming the teachers. I Absolutely. love that. So, that you know, is incredible. You know, when they when they come through the program, you know, they're they're going to walk into a program where they're walking in on the ground floor with people who are patient mm -hmm. and who understand what it takes to build skill. My experience wasn't, you know, I wasn't that super talented kid who everybody just knew that they were going to be a famous artist. Like right. I grew up in the hood. I grew up in the hood. I grew up, you know, in the streets. Um, I was almost killed on several occasions. I mean, wow. I had a very, very, very rough life. Mm -hmm. And I kind of stumbled into art school because I just couldn't think of doing anything that I didn't like. And I always kind of liked to do art and music. I was a creative, 
you know, and when I got to art school, you know, I realized how, how, you know, behind I was versus everybody else. I would say about 80% of people who were at the school at the time were better than me. And so, you know, I realized that I had to, you know, either take this very seriously and quit playing, or I was going to have to find something else to do. Mm -hmm. And so I started working, you know, just in an obsessive way. I would do things like draw a thousand heads, a thousand hands. And, you know, I would, I would constantly push myself, you know, to, um, I would constantly push myself to address weaknesses that I had in my skill set. And I was building from the ground up. And when I graduated, there were two other draftsmen in the school that were better than me. This is a school at the time that had about 6,500 people in it. There were two wow. that could draw better than me. And as it stands today, I draw better than both of them because I kept grinding and I kept growing and I still draw and work like a student even today, 20 mm -hmm. years later. But that's an interesting point too, in terms of you stumbling into, into art school, because I think that a lot of our youth, you know, we deal with so many, you know, our struggles are different. Uh, yeah. There's a lot of disparities in our communities. So like you were saying, being in the streets, there are a lot of young kids, elementary, middle, high school that, you know, have dreams and aspirations, but they're not pointed in the right direction. And so we lose them. Right. So, you know, just curious is because you sound like the, the poster child and the example of someone that, you know, started in the streets and had this, you know, this challenging life, but you were able to, able to overcome. But it sounds like that's something that was in you. Um, already what about the ones that don't necessarily have that hustle or drive in them but still have dreams and hopes and aspirations uh, but they're in the hood you know um oftentimes what i found is that um one of the reasons why people in the hood in in situations difficult situations why they don't rise above a certain level or don't rise to reach their full potential as people in this world is because they lack really one thing and, and it's not always opportunity it's inspiration mm. and so what i found is that when i go to these youth programs when i go to these schools in these inner city communities and when mm -hmm. i talk to them and i show them my work and i talk to them about the things that i've done and i tell them that i've worked on things like star wars for george lucas and i've you know done films and video games and they're they're hearing this and they're seeing my work and then they're looking at my face and realize that i look like them mm. something happens in their brains where they all of a sudden realize i could do that too but until you see somebody doing something like that you don't even think it's possible you see, and so that's why it's important for me to always get out into the community and to connect with people and just show my face to the children um, and, and, and let them know that, you know, it is possible for us that if you have a talent and a passion for art, for mm -hmm. drawing and for things like that, it is totally possible for us to get out and work at big companies like Disney and Pixar. Sometimes they just need the inspiration and they just need to see one of their own doing it and successful in order to have that dream. And sometimes it's nothing more than me planting a seed. You know, yeah. but you know, I, I wouldn't be surprised if, you know, in, in 10, 15 years, somebody taps me on the shoulders and said, hey, you remember me? You came to my fifth grade classroom that day and you gave a talk about art. And that's what inspired me to go into the industry. And that's what I hope to do. There's a lot of untapped talent in our inner city streets for sure. So I hope that we can get this message out to all of them. Um, and if this is one of their interests that they can definitely connect and, and grow with your program. So tell us about costs. Um, and talk to us about, you know, the length of the program. And then I also want to know, um, you know, how people can connect with you. Absolutely. Um, I prefer to use the word investment. Oh, yes. <laughs> <Please>. <laughs> yes. <laughs> investment does have an ROI. Thank you for that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying here? <laughs> There's such a negative connotation to all of those other words. I, I say, look, for the investment that you put into this program, you are going to get something in return. That's the psychology. I want them to understand that they will definitely, if they put in the work and they come to the program, everything that they need to be successful is built in here. Like I said, I'm a master curriculum designer. And yeah. so I, I built this program 
unfettered. I didn't have an executive office or an administration above me telling me I couldn't do this or that. I didn't have any red tape. I wrote the program exactly as I saw fit. And I really do believe this is like my master sort of uh, class of curriculum. And I'm super excited about it. And so right now we have a first year uh, discount for anybody who comes into the program, which means the whole 18 month program, which is 18 classes, 18 10 week classes, mm -hmm. would be about $11,500 uh, um, um, in terms of uh, the full cost for the program. And then there's also discounts if people would pay, will pay with um, cryptocurrency. There's discounts if people pay all up front. You know, we're trying to give as many opportunities for people to, to lower their costs. Right. Um, their investment um and <laughs> well there's a cost to be the boss right michael so we can right. <laughs> it, it takes money to make money, you know? <laughs> but but yes, what right. i try to what i try to tell people is you know i am a world-class curriculum designer i'm a world-class artist um an inferior an inferior version of my program at some of these large private schools or, or art and design schools would cost about sixty five thousand wow. dollars okay and so you're getting a world-class top-notch top -notch education mm -hmm. um, for a fraction you know, of that cost. But not only that, the other upside of this is that if people come into the program and they build the portfolio that they will build coming out of the program, their likelihood of qualifying for a full-ride scholarship at some of these other art schools skyrockets. Mm. You see, because I know what kind of portfolios get full ride scholarships, and they're definitely not the type of portfolios that are going to come out of my program. But also, some can come out of your program and walk straight into an incredible job opportunity. Wouldn't you say that? Yeah, it's, to it's totally possible that somebody could come out of my program within a very short time. They might have to have a little bit more skill in the beginning coming mm -hmm. in, but they, you could definitely come right out of the program into uh, a job opportunity. And one of the things that we're doing is we're, we're going to evaluate how the first year goes. I already have a, a second 18 month program that's a follow up to nice. this particular program um, already sort of outlined and, and I'm starting to write the program out. So if this is successful, as successful as we think it is, we're going to roll out this second uh, program to follow up this first program. And then the other thing that people might not realize is that we also started a studio called Grind Before Glory Studios. And we are, we are talking with production houses that have large budgets that are looking to produce animation and things like that. And we're going to be doing pre-production artwork and things like that. So we're, we're so looking- So they can get a job with you. <laughs> that's how we're looking at it. We're looking at the Grind Before Glory art yeah. program as a as a pipeline to the studio so there's a lot, we're, uh, you know i'm thinking you know big picture i'm a visionary i like to think big and i want to always want to create opportunities for my students and um you know but when they get out one one thing is for sure they will be far far superior to mm -hmm. what they were when they walked in and that's really more than anything. That's what people want when they go and invest in an art school is they want to make sure they're going to get a return on that investment. Absolutely. And unfortunately, at a lot of these other schools, you know, they overpromise and they un under deliver. They're like used car salesmen. Mm. And it really drives me crazy, especially when they do this to black kids mm -hmm. because they court the black kids and they court the black kids tuition dollars. But once mm -hmm. they get into the school, they don't give them nearly the, the attention that they should. Absolutely. You know, and in my situation, that's where that's where I would differ greatly. So, you know, I really just wanted to create a situation where I could I could have a direct sort of connection with people without having to deal with the bureaucracy of universities. I could teach them the skills that they need and help them have a fighting chance of getting into the industry. And I really believe, I really believe based on, you know, my track record, what I've been able to do, um, not just in the industry, but also in, you know, at the educational university level and things like that, I really do believe that this is gonna be wildly successful. No, I, I know it is. And I can definitely see this becoming the full, um, you know, funnel and pipeline to a lot of um, not only just uh, film production, but just everyone in any space that needs um, this type of artist, for sure. 
So that's super exciting. I I feel like the folks will be coming to you like, we need to hire someone. We're recruiting. (laughs) Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, I just want to tell um, everyone just just so they don't get too discouraged when they hear, um, you know, uh, about what it what what the investment is for the program um, that they can pay uh, every at at the beginning of every block, which is our version of a semester, they Mm -hmm. can pay a certain amount. Um, so that they can pay in installments. And then uh, the bank that's helped set up our business accounts actually offered our students uh, loans to take the program so they can go and apply wow. for at the bank. So they don't have to you know, have any funds up front. They could go and apply for a loan, go to school and then pay it as they go. So we try to cover all the bases to make sure that it's not cost prohibitive for anyone. This is full college tuition. I love this. This is incredible. (laughs) No, Michael, this is absolutely wonderful. I'm so excited for you um, and your team. And so you said this is uh, launching, are we thinking late June, early July? No, you said summer 2022. We're, we're shooting for after, we're going to have a hard date for after, after July 4th. We got a little held up um, by um, a couple of things, but after July 4th, we should have a hard day. We're shooting for somewhere first or second week of July. That's amazing. So we'll have to circle back for that launch uh, to do something else to just make sure we we heighten that and let folks know. Uh, but how can they reach out? How can they contact you? How can they, you know, even pre-enroll into the program? Um, so they can go to www.grindbeforeglory.com. This is www.grindbeforeglory.com. They can check out um, the website. They can look at the curriculum. They can look at all the different things that we're doing and we're planning. And then they can early uh, do the early enrollment and early registration and sign up for our, our email, our newsletter, where they can uh, get uh, updates as to what's going on, when we're starting new programs, when we're hiring new instructors, anything cool that we're doing, they can find out by joining our email list. They can also look me up personally um, under my, I, my I, I have the same handle everywhere. It's drawaholic1124. So D-R-A-W-A-H-O-L-I-C, like alcoholic, but I'm not an alcoholic, I'm drawaholic. Right. And, uh, and so it's <laughs> drawaholic1124. They can find me on Instagram, they can find me on ArtStation, they can find me on TikTok. I have over 80,000 followers on TikTok. Mm -hmm. And actually, you know, the cool thing about TikTok is I have a lot, I have over 250 videos where I'm doing all kinds of demos. They can see how I draw. They can watch me draw in real time. They can see how I teach because I'm actually doing tutorials and things like that. So they can get a sense of who I would be as an instructor just by going to my TikTok and spending some time watching videos. Absolutely. Well, Michael, it has been an immense pleasure. Again, yeah. super excited for you. Thank you for the work that you're doing. Thank you for even having um, the insight and the and the passion to do this for our community. Uh, we absolutely need it. I know that you know the folks applying will be more than just us, but I love that uh, we'll have a direct impact on young black or aspiring artists that are going to come through your program and come out as exceptional. So congratulations again, and we're looking forward to the launch. Definitely please keep us posted and you all go and check out Grind Before Glory. Thank you so much, Faith. It's been a pleasure. Absolutely. Same here. Thank you. Talk soon.